I like to know where people stand so I know how to treat you accordingly. They be trying to do it, I'm just doing me. Yeah. I'll be working hard, he just want it free. Be competitive with yourself. Hey, what's going on? It's Jay Sean for another quick Yo. video. Uh, so this video right here, I'm going to talk about, it's basically about the Cartier Santos Large, right? It's something I recently picked up. It's a watch that I've actually really enjoyed since having it. It's very, it's it's just different from my other time pieces. It's just, a, it, it fills in the gap or a void for me, right? Because my ultimate dream piece is a Rolex Day Date Platinum or White Gold with, uh, I think they dropped it. I think they have a 40 millimeter now or something like that. I think it used to be 41, if I'm not mistaken. Depending on how it's presented, it has to be official, authorized dealer or Rolex direct only for me. Uh, if it does have any type of diamonds, it needs to be factory only. I don't do bust down watches. Um, I can talk about that in another video. Nothing's wrong with it. It's just that you have to know the your what your reason of investing or your purpose, your likes, dislikes. And again, it's your reason of why you're investing in that piece. It has to make sense for you. The more I learned, the more I understood of that part of the game or whatever you want to call it, I just stay away from bust down watches. Uh, I do like the look of it. Don't get me wrong. I think if I just had money to just throw on something and I just wanted it, would I ever get one? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I would. But when I think of the value in that sense of why I purchase them and what I want it for, it doesn't really fit enough value for me. I can't, and when I say value, it doesn't have to be a dollar value. It just value in how it's important to me and affects my life uh, in the way that I want it to. I don't find enough value in it to buy something bust down because I could have easily got a fully bust down. And uh, I'm going to make a video about that and kind of explain it to you. If you don't understand, you just are a person on the outside looking in and just see the shininess and in, in thinking it's something that you want when you really don't understand what you're investing in, right? I'll say that for another video. But let me just, before I get to this, uh, my whole thing with the Santos is basically, is it too big? Um, that is something that's very common that you see floating on the internet. Is it too big because of the size of the bezel? Um the size of the basically the diameter of the, the the watch itself right so i don't know all the technical terms and what i'm trying to say but i'm not speaking to watch experts i'm speaking to people who are like maybe like me who were interested in certain time pieces and just need a little bit of education like real life education give me a little perspective i would say so let me get to this video about this santos now i'm gonna tell you right now if you are if you're a person who buys um watches watches based on pictures bad idea you need to try it on yourself because just like they say actors in real life look bigger on uh like the screen the big screen or models look thicker or something like that on pictures because it for some reason it just adds a little weight or for some reason well it goes kind of the same for watches right so this watch no doubt is definitely a larger size watch right it is definitely not a big watch or it's not a too big watch it is larger in size but what makes it wearable to me or not bulky is that it lays flat so you see the profile it's very flat now this comes with a band and it comes with the metal metal like stainless santos band now i didn't think i was gonna like this band at first but i really do like it it has a much narrow taper than the the steel band and it kind of makes it look a little more slim for me at least I, I like it a lot now between this and my explorer which is a 39 i like them both and i pick them for different reasons depending on maybe what i'm wearing or something like that now, like I said, this is a larger watch, but it's not an oversized watch like you might find it like an Invicta watch or something like that. Or it's not like a big, bulky, oversized watch like a Breitling Avenger or something like that. This right here to me is a very sleek watch. When I came in getting it, my approach was to get the white face or white dial in the medium or smallest version, right? Online in Cartier, they they market that watch as actually a lady's watch, right? Obviously, I'm not a lady, and I'm not a big person. I'm not a small person. Uh, just for perspective, I'm only about uh, I'm five eight and about one seventy ish, right? I'm not big. I'm not small. I don't have 
a baby risk and I don't have a super huge risk either, right? I'm not a big person in general. So with that being said, this particular watch, again, I'm not saying it's small because it's definitely not small, but it's not oversized. It's a larger a dial. It's a larger face, but it's not oversized. In pictures, I'm not going to lie to you, the smaller version looks more proportional. It actually does look pretty good in the picture. I felt the same way about my Explorer. In person, the smaller version of this looked like a female's watch due to the size. It just looked too small. Now, keep in mind, if you walk into the store with a large G-Shock and you try on a 36 millimeter, you're going to... Well, I don't know what happened to my screen. You're going to think that it looks way too small. You're going to think that... Uh, the watch feels small because you just put you just had a large watch on that you've been wearing all day, right? So I actually came into the store with a larger, I mean a smaller watch, and then I went to put this on, and I was like, I don't know, it's like I like it, but I feel like it's too big. So I came in there looking for the small version, and when I tried on the small version, I was like, I don't know, this looks too small. Like it literally looked like a female's watch, and I'm cool with 36 millimeters depending on uh, the bezel. And depending on the band combination and stuff like that, I can wear a 36. I do wear a 36 and I wear a 39 and I can wear a 41 date just. It just all depends on the, the whole package, right? I ended up leaving with this one, the, the, the large version with the blue dial with the date on it, which the small one does not come with. In the pictures that I see online with everybody talking about the sizing of this, it does look pretty big. It looks a bit oversized. Like Cartier has like a very extreme values, either too small or way too big. It's like no in between. Now, if I could pick and I was custom making this, would I pick it a little smaller? I probably would. But in reality, nothing's wrong with this watch. It does not look oversized in real life. It has a nice, it basically has a nice presence to it. You know what I mean? So hopefully you can kind of see it. It has a very nice presence. The other one just looked too dainty, right? Now, I'm the type of person where I don't need big bulky items. I'm pretty past that phase. That's why I was in the market in my mind to get a small timepiece because I'm used to that, that sizing. That that's what I was going for. This is a sporty, casual watch to me. You can dress it up. You can dress it down just like an Explorer. The only time I'll probably pick an Explorer over this is maybe if I had all black on or something and the black uh, didn't feel like it played well or as good with this face or this dial. This dial is actually a dark blue, kind of like a gradient this blue kind of, I can't even explain it. But the blue itself is so dark that at certain distances, it's going to look black also. So it really wouldn't matter necessarily. It's just for me personally, that's kind of how I picked and changed. I chose to get uh, where they explore if I'm wearing all black. And it just all depends on what I'm wearing and my mood for it. But in general, this is a great daily. It's something that I wear often. I actually enjoy putting on the leather band. The Metal Santos stainless band does look a little bit more presence but it's not oversized. It just adds more presence to you. It is noticeable. I've seen people eye this up because, I mean, it just has a subtle polish to the, to the, um, to the bezel area, but it's like just enough. And it has like that satin type finish to it. It's just enough to catch your eye. It's a nice, classy, classic timepiece. I definitely do like it. I definitely recommend it. Uh, I mean, if a female wanted to, they could. I just feel like it's a little bit big for a female. It's like a very in-between size. It's going to be conflicting to some people. What I can tell you about sizing is this. It's totally up to you. There's no such thing as a good fit or bad fit if you like it, right? Now, if you want somebody's opinion, because trust me, I was asking people too. I was like, man, is this too big? You know, and it's like that. that's where it comes to taste, right? So a lot of people couldn't tell me if it was too big, but they can 100% tell me that the small one looked too small is basically what everybody said when I asked everybody in person. It just looked too small in person for some reason. It looked very underwhelming. It looked, they say the square faces can wear larger and can wear, I think it's actually a 35, but it can wear like a 36 round face or round dial, like a, like a Rolex, but it just looked too small. So if you pick a 36 millimeter with a polished bezel versus a fluted bezel or a diamond bezel factory, of course, 
it does for some reason with the fluted or diamond bezel i don't know if it's actually a wider bezel slightly or the shape but something about it makes it not look as small it's weird so i tried a 36 explorer and i thought it was too small well i mean it wasn't too small i could still wear it but the presence of it was too like it looked too it looked too boring it looked too simple to the point where it's like you don't pay attention to it at all now if that's what you're going for then i guess that's what you're going for and it works out for you but i don't know even my 39 it just has a presence to it even though it's a plain simple <clears throat> no nonsense type of timepiece it sticks out in a good way right it's not overbearing it's like a classic timepiece this right here is the same thing it's just something about it it just it's classy it's nice uh so i guess at the end of the day what i'm telling you is go to an actual boutique go to an actual cartier store or an authorized dealer try it on for yourself you will initially feel and think it is a little large especially when you take a picture but i'm telling you i've been wearing this for a while in the first day for the first few hours i was like man is this too big i can't tell i'm starting to feel like it's too big and the more i wore it it just kind of grew on me and it's like now just even switching from 36 39 to this it, it feels perfectly fine it is a nice watch that i highly recommend now if you have very small wrists like super fragile tiny wrists this may be too big for you and you can look into the small version but if i could go back and pick i would still pick this version excuse me and i would still pick this dial over the white dial excuse me it's definitely uh has good presence to it i like it a lot let me know what y'all think do you think it's too big even in the video it might look come off big just like i told you it does in pictures i think a lot of people hold their hand like this which may put more emphasis on the face but when you maybe if you open your hand up to kind of spread the uh the way you visually look at it um i don't know i don't think it looks too crazy it is larger like i said but it's definitely not bulky and oversized and i, I heard that the older santoses were thicker so they made it very low profile which is good so it kind of just sits really flush on your wrist of course they have like the what is it called like the um the skeleton one and stuff like that which costs quite a bit more uh but those are super nice too a lot of people ice those out and they look great uh but yeah it, it just all depends what you're going for now one thing that i did learn so i've been looking at a lot of cartier jewelry right uh a lot of girls or females seem to wear love bracelets and like the juke bracelet the nail bracelet uh you really don't see men well i don't really see men wearing them right they always have the large or regular size and then they have the small version right the nail i'm just gonna call it nail right the nail bracelet looks good in large and small I mean, large on male or female to me. It does look nice. It can look a little oversized, but it has a nice presence to it where it's not oversized. It's just a present. It has a great presence to it, right? So even a person with a small wrist could still wear the larger size and still look feminine. It still looks nice. It just has a greater presence. Now, they make a smaller one that even at Cartier, they told me they'd never seen a guy wear it. Now, for me... I don't I like your opinion but I'm still going to make my decision. It all depends on what I'm wearing and how I want to style it. So I know a lot of women do bracelet stacking, so do I. I. I do it. I have different pieces that I do smaller pieces or smaller smaller or smaller larger. It all depends, right? So for example, I'm actually probably going to get the small juke. It's not about the cost, it's not about the value. It's just that I I plan to stack it with some smaller bracelets that I have, right? So I have like a smaller Miami Cuban here and then I have a larger Miami Cuban here. I've actually wore the smaller nail with my smaller setup and it actually looks okay to me. It's something where I feel like it balances out where I want to be super simple. I wear the small. If I want to go a little more, I stack it. Or if I want to go crazy, I put the, the sticky on right here. Or if I want to go super crazy, I stack this with this or I stack it with my tennis. I stack it with, um, I mean, whatever I feel like. I just... I like how that looks, right? So for me, I'm trying to get, well, not every piece, but I try to get more timeless pieces that I know that I can wear past any trends, right? So something like this, this is a bit much. So it may be something that um, for some is not going to work in the long run. I'm not sure. Uh, 
Cubans, Miami Cubans, uh, those type of items are pretty timeless as well. Maybe not the ones that are super iced out like this. But um, for me, like, again, you have to find the value in what you want it for and it will make sense to you or it won't. And if it doesn't, don't do it. Don't follow the trends. Get it if it fits what you need in your preference and what you want. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of getting off topic a little bit, but I brought up the, the juke and all that stuff because what I learned is there are authorized dealers. Just so say like Rolex, for example, you buy a Rolex from an authorized dealer. It's all good, right? You get the paperwork. It, it's still warranted and all that stuff. Just like if you bought it directly from Rolex. So if you look at, say, for example, um, Cartier, if you go to a, an authorized dealer of Cartier, you can buy a Cartier watch, a Cartier watch. I don't know why I said Cartier. And that's another thing. People say Cartier, but I naturally speak with my T's and to D's. So I say, uh, instead of Cartier, I say Cartier. You know what I'm saying? I'm fully aware that there's no D in it. It's just how I talk. So instead of saying like Baltimore, I say Baltimore with a D. Definitely not Cartier. It's Cartier, right? So anyway, um, I'm not here to correct you on that. I don't even say it with the correct accent or whatever you want to call it with it. But um, if you buy... The watch you can buy from authorized dealer and it's just like buying it from Cartier Direct, right? If you buy the jewelry, I learned that if you go to any store that sells it and it's supposed supposedly authentic pieces, right? Even if they're a reputable store, those are not authorized by Cartier to sell there. So they have to be secondhand or resold or like aftermarket, uh, not aftermarket, but um, like a reseller's market um dealer or something cartier does not authorize anybody to sell cartier brand new jewelry of any kind unless it comes from cartier directly keep that in mind excuse me if it saves you even a buck or two go get it from direct you're going to have the experience of buying it from cartier but also you're going to have like it registered correctly you don't have to worry about it not being authentic all that stuff don't take chances because like, for example, the juke bracelet, you see people imitate it, but it's obviously that it was inspired by Cartier, right? But then now they got people literally taking the Cartier bracelet and putting Cartier stamps on it and fake serial numbers on it, literally trying to fake. And it could be real gold or whatever, but they try to fake uh, the real thing. In a lot of places, the way you know the difference between it being fake or not is the weight of the actual bracelet. They weigh a certain uh, gram and the fake ones are not going to be as accurate. And there's a lot of subtle details. But imagine paying all that money and you want it to be something that's not. I just feel like that doesn't make sense to me unless you're saving a significant amount of money. And um, I don't know. I still don't agree with that. I, I don't like that's like you buy Nikes, right? And then I, I see a shoe that looks just like the Nike but it's not Nike, it's Psyche or something. I would not wear that shoe. I would feel corny wearing that shoe, no matter how accurate or how close it looked to the Nike, I would not wear a Psyche just because it looked close and it didn't cost as much. That sounds ridiculous. I'm not gonna buy a, 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 a piece, especially if it's real gold or whatever, and it's not even an actual item. I would rather stay away from it and just get a totally different style. Now I'm not hating or telling you what to do with, your, with what you do and your decisions, I'm just saying, me personally, that's not what I would do. I know a lot of people who can't afford certain things, they'll just buy like obvious clones or not even clones, just an obvious like uh, aftermarket fake version. I mean, do what you got to do. I just look at it like not everything is meant for everybody, right? I can't afford a Lamborghini. One day I will. I can't afford a Lamborghini. I'm not going to go get a Honda and put Lamborghini logos on it. And just because it looks like the same body style, I'm, I'm just not doing it. I just know that I can't buy a Lamborghini and people would know that maybe in certain circumstances, they could see that my lifestyle just doesn't align with having a Lamborghini. It just is what it is. So, so me personally, I rather stay away from it. Now, if you're doing it for to be inspired, if you're doing it to get the feel of how the bracelet fits and I mean, do you at the end of the day, do you regardless, you know, do what's best for you and your circumstances. I just don't really agree with it. I never have with stuff like that. I would just rather wait, wait until I could actually obtain whatever my goal is. Anybody, I don't care where you work at. You can save to get whatever you desire. If, if it's that desirable for you, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, be careful because a lot of places sell 
certain brand items and you have to understand if it's not an authorized dealer it could be potentially fake it could be um a lot of different things it might not be exactly what you think you're buying so with cartier just understand cartier is the only people authorized to sell cartier jewelry period Ask them if you don't believe me, they're going to tell you because I didn't even know it either. So I just wanted to share that with you. At this point, I am rambling and talking quite a bit. But uh, what else do I want to say? Um, yeah, sometime in the near future, I'm going to get the small the small juke bracelet. I know, again, a lot of it's not popular amongst guys, but I, I don't care. I feel comfortable with it. I tried it on. It was small. But guess what? I have a, even like a small cube and a small rope here. Um, these are small too, but I like it because that's the look that I wanted. It's not like I got small because I couldn't afford the big or I got small because of whatever other reason there could be. It, I chose this on purpose for what I wanted. I just wanted a little bit of rose color on my neck and that's the reason why I did it. If I wanted a bigger, bulkier piece, that's what I would have got. I didn't want it for that reason. Same thing with the bracelet. You stack it how you want to stack it and do it how you want to do it. And that's pretty much it. You can have your time and place of how you want to wear the smaller bracelets and how you want to stack it too. You have a time and place for your watch. You have a time and place for whatever it is you choose. My thing is like this. Don't think of something that can handle everything. There has to be a point. I don't care how much exp how expensive it is or how cheap it is. You just have to build your way up. You can't look at it like, bam, I'm going to get all this and I'm going to be done. No, even like time pieces, you start off with the one that you think you could actually get the most use out of. And then from there, you take care of it and you stack, meaning like you get another one that fills another void. So for me, all my time pieces fill different voids and purposes so that none of it is being wasted. Now, I know the piece, my dream piece, but I know how much it costs and I know that that's something in the far future. So until then, every piece that I got really does fill a void for me. Same thing with jewelry. Start with something small that you know you're going to wear all the time. Like, you know, I can have a big, huge piece, which I will get at some point. But the thing of it is, it's like, where am I going to wear that? How often am I going to wear it? Is it really going to get use and value in that sense? And I really can't say yes to that. So I'd rather put it in something like this. I could wear it all the time, all day. I could sleep in if I want to. I have rose pieces. I have white pieces, uh, yellow pieces. And I wear them as I, I can rotate them around basically as I choose. The same thing with building your wardrobe up. You start with a shoe of whatever kind that you can wear and get use out of. Then you slowly start building and stacking to the point where you don't wear any of them out that quick because you, you have a lot to rotate through. Same thing with everything in life, right? So uh, I'm going to stop talking because I don't even know why you would be watching this video at this point because I have bounced around so much. It's kind of crazy. Uh, let me think. Anything else? Nothing to say. I'm going to cut myself off. With that being said, make sure you do everything at top level, at your top level. Remember, you're no competition with anybody except yourself. So make sure your next move is your best move or at least your better move. Till next time. Later.